Ladies and gentlemen, this is Jay Michaels, and we are bringing you some fantastic television courtesy of the Boston Sci-Fi Film Festival. Now, the Boston Sci-Fi Film Festival is 49 years old this year. It is the oldest and one of the most respected American film festival for this genre. So we're really thrilled to have these filmmakers here. They have a very high standard at Boston Sci-Fi. So this is some of the finest in new works for the genre. So I'm thrilled to be able to chat with, with these individuals. Boston Sci-Fi Film Festival turns 50 next year. So join us and make sure you're part of things so that you could be part of the flight to 50. Want to know more? You go to bostonsci-fi.com and that's where there are schedules, there are articles, there's all the things you need to know about this fantastical festival that provides fantastical films from the fantastical imaginations of these filmmakers. Let's get right to it. Uh, Keith, tell me about your film. Hey, Jay. Um, thank you for having me. Uh, my film is called Ozma. It is a sort of art house, uh, sci-fi, adventure, B-movie type thing set in London. It's about a guy who is bereaved, uh, but he wakes up one night and finds a jellyfish type creature in his alley by his house. Uh, the jellyfish starts communicating with him telepathically, and then he ends up on an adventure traveling through London uh, with some sort of evil police on his tail. It's a fantastical film, and it also has musicians all the way through it. The musicians turn up in the background. It's a feature film. It's showing on Saturday at 7.30 p.m., and I'm coming all the way from here in London. I'm going to come all the way to Boston to be there for a Q&A. So if you do come, please, uh, please say hello. That's absolutely wonderful. Oh, I'm so glad you're making it. I, I can't be here this year and I'm bummed over it. That's why I'm so glad I was able to, to connect with everybody on this level. Okay, so so yeah, you got me with B movie. That's 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 my favorite. That's that's my that's my wine of choice. Absolutely <laughs> excellent. Um, but but why the bereaved? Why why do we start with him being bereaved? What's what's the connection? Uh, well, um, without wanting to give any spoilers away, it seems that these uh, jellyfish creatures uh, are a, 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 they are attracted to people who are bereaved by by uh, partners who have committed suicide. And uh, so although the film is very whimsical in many ways, it also has this kind of serious uh, side to it in which it's looking at um, it's looking at uh bereavement and how you get over bereavement and perhaps this telepathic perhaps this telepathic um jellyfish can help us uh let go uh so that's why jay it's really interesting if, if if one delves into it and we talk about suicide we always wonder what brought them to it and it's interesting that you're creating this 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 fantastical element that there's this creature that is able to understand why why people would do such a thing. So so you're you're giving quite the touch to it. Where did this idea come from? Well, um, it sort of came to me uh, during COVID. Actually, there was a lot of loss, I suppose, and um, uh, the I was also cycling around London a lot because I work in London, and the streets were empty, and um, so I kind of started thinking, yeah, I wanna I wanna have a I wanna have bicycles in it. So there's a bicycle race a chase which uh, sort of threads through the movie. And then I also use lots of ideas that I've been kicking around for a long time about using musicians in films. So there's a whole host of things that came together for the movie uh, that uh, I hope works. I mean, people tell me it works, um, but uh, uh, the actual bereavement side of it, I don't know. I just wanted to plug into something really meaty at the heart of it, but have those kind of B movie tropes. You know, there's a guy with a big glowing jellyfish in his hands at the same time, it's got this kind of seriousness to it. Uh, I I like that because it's almost like your creature uh, uh, is is the metamorphosis of this. We get that Kafka feeling, like 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 yeah. our, our inner our inner feelings turn into bugs or jellyfish or whatever. So, really Jay, I think you are made to watch my film, Jay. I think you you get it. <laughs> I would love to. I would really love to, and and we'll talk about that afterwards. I would love to see your film. Um, and you said when when is it going up again? So it's uh, on Saturday, Saturday. seven thirty p.m. at the cinema, 
and it's going to be the US theatrical premiere. So uh, we're really excited to be coming over. Ladies and gentlemen, not only see the film, but but look for uh, Keith and his team there for it. They're tapping into some fascinating things. And if you want to ask questions, no better time than right there and speak to the filmmaker. Congratulations and joy. I hope it turns out to be absolutely wonderful. And 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 may there be no may there be no grief in your life regarding regarding this film. Thank you, Jay. Christian, tell me about your film. Hey, uh, my name's Christian Debney. I am the director, animator, editor, writer of a six and a half minute animated film called Starship. It's um, a photorealistic uh, animation that tells the story of a astronaut who travels to Mars and fulfills her father's wishes. Um, there's kind of a few layers to the film. Um, which I might leave to see if people can guess what those layers are and the meaning of certain elements within it. And um, it's been in a few, it's won a few awards in festivals so far. It's been in, uh, featured in 3D World magazine. It's been pretty well received. It was invited to the um, World Science Fiction Society convention in China uh, late last year. Um, yeah, it's been, uh, it's been quite a ride so far and I'm really excited to have it in Boston. What kind of wishes does your lead character have to do on Mars for her father? Well, I don't really want to, I don't want to give it away. So you'll oh, have to, okay. it's only six and a half minutes. You can spare the time, I'm sure. Oh, for sure. I was just seeing if I can, if I, if I can woo some of our audience out there into it. Because you got my attention uh, when you said fulfill your father's wishes. I said, okay, that, that, that sounds very deep, very strong on Mars. Wow. Okay, and there's the science fiction element. Where did the where did the idea come from? Um, well, originally, um, from I have a three year old, and uh, I took this photograph of her um, in an astronaut outfit, and um, I just kind of thought it'd be cool if she went to Mars as an astronaut, and um, and if I'm not around to see it, then uh, maybe she can do something for me when she gets there. And so, um, so I, I the also the interest and the design of the spaceship, which is pretty apparent when you see the film, is it's kind of based on uh, Starship, Elon Musk Starship. And uh, I just started noodling away. I run a visual effects company in Sydney, Australia, um, at Disney. And in my spare time, I just started making a model of the Starship, and um, and then that just evolved into this film, and then. The idea developed and uh, I just kind of got a bit involved in it and um, and just pushed it as hard as I could in terms of photorealism and launch the launch and all this sort of stuff. So it just kind of grew over about a year and a half in my spare time. And then I, I released the film on the day of the first launch of Starship because I became quite... Um, a big member of the SpaceX community on Twitter and things like this. By releasing, I built an Instagram following with 10,000 followers over four or five months with just posting pictures of this short film, uh, the development of it. And um, so I set myself a target of releasing it on the day of the first launch. And um, and that was, yeah, that was that's the story of it, really. I wasn't expecting it to do much, but it's done quite a lot. So... It's been quite an adventure so far. Your voice changed so completely when you mentioned your daughter in the little space suit. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That yeah. said it all for me. I don't need to hear anything else. Now I got it. Now I got it. Sure. Well done. Well done. Uh, when is it going up? It is. Um, it's on the virtual program three. I'm not sure what day that is to be honest. Um, I presume that's just online, right? So you can... And that's great. So anyone can see it. And I think that's wonderful. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, if yeah. you can't get to Boston, get to your computer and, 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 see, and see how one little Polaroid gave birth to a fascinating film. Uh, I wish you a lot of luck. And I think that would be wonderful. And I totally get it. The moment you showed me that picture, I said, okay, now I, now, now I understand that film. Good for you. Much luck to you yeah. with that.
Thank you. Jean-Michel. Thanks a lot. My pleasure. Hello. Tell tell us about your film. Hello, Jay. Uh, thank you for having me. Um, I'm Jean-Michel Tawi. I'm living in Paris, in France. And I'm, uh, I used to work for Ubisoft uh, during uh, 15 years. And uh, I have my own uh, VFX uh, company in here. I'm, I'm working for TV series and for, for, for movies and uh, a lot of stuff in here. And I am the director, producer, uh, VFX guy and uh, set designer of the, the movie uh, uh, Dark Cell. Uh, I'm sorry, I made a lot of things on this movie, but w when you don't have a big budget, you everybody knows this, but you have to do everything. So uh, it was a lot of fun. Uh, and this movie takes place in a, a space prison uh, in the future, of course. And you have uh, two inmates that are doing exactly what they are doing every day, which is uh, not uh, not much. Uh, so suddenly there is two guards that enter the, the, their cell and uh, they, they tell them that uh, the, 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 the facilities was burst by some kind of zombie-like uh, creature and they have to eject the cell in space to go back in, uh, in Earth. But it's not possible, unfortunately, because the computer refused. There are four, no, but the, the, the cell is designed only for two persons. So they will have to choose the two survivors, and you will have this kind of game between the, 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 the four characters, and they, they will try each other to, to say, hey, I'm, I'm better than this guy, I have some, I have some, gold, uh, some gold, I have something for you, don't kill me, uh, bring me with you on Earth. So it's a kind of um, um, thriller, uh, psychological thriller. You also you also give a very deep parable in there uh, about what really makes us worthy as people. Uh, is is it gold? Is it is it what we what is it that makes us worthy? If 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 we have to cut if we have to cut in half everyone to survive, what yeah. is it that's really worthy? So there's an interesting thought that you have going on in there. You have so much going on. Oh my gosh, where did this all come from? Where now? Now it's all you. Now now in the in the good old days, yes, you're not supposed to do that. It's called a vanity project. But nowadays, okay. no, it's that's what you do. That's what you do. You, now we have the technology. You can act, direct, produce, write, dance. You could do it all right there. And I'm I'm thrilled that you did. Um, where did this idea come from? What uh, what was the gestation? The, uh, this idea comes from the fact that I really wanted to do to do a, a, a real uh, science fiction movie, you know, with a, with a real set, with a real gun. Uh, I really like the, the movies like uh, Alien, uh, and I want to, to to have this kind of feeling that you are in a, in a real uh, in a real space uh, station and it's really hard to do because you 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 have to find some some guns or you have to rent it but it don't really exist in france this kind of stuff perhaps in la but not in here and you have to build all the stuff and uh, so I really wanted to have something in in, in one space, and uh, I decided to 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 create everything by myself. So uh, in order to do this, I uh, I bought some five three uh, D printer and I made it. So I can show, uh, I can show <laughs> you something. <laughs> so for example, this is the gun, and it's working. Huh? Okay. And Everything is made by a 3D printer, by myself, and uh, all this kind of stuff, and uh, you see. And uh, you have this uh, this cell. The cell is, uh, I think, uh, uh, 20 uh, square meters, and it's 100% made with uh, five uh, 3D printers. It, it, it took me uh, two years to do to do this. Wow. And, uh, and the idea comes from two actors, because I knew uh, one strong guy Alain Figlas, and one um, sh shy guy uh, named Jonathan Pino Bonetti. And the idea came immediately to have these two guys really different, uh, a big contrast be between them in this, uh, in this cell, and to have all the action taking place inside. The door open, the two guards enter, the door close, and they are four, and they will kind of deal for their life. And this is this is the idea, the, the, the beginning of the idea. And after uh, when I write the script, 
Uh, I tried to to find a way to have something cool, to have some kind of twist at the end, and to make it uh, cool to watch. That's it. I'm sure you did. I'm blown away by the fact that the whole thing is 3D printing. I think I think yeah. it's science fiction to make science fiction, and I think exactly. that's really incredible. When is your show uh, running? When is it at the festival? The, uh, Darcel is running the Wednesday 14. Uh, at the Astra uh, sequence, it's at six o'clock. Uh, where is it? Uh, just let me check. Uh, Somerville Theater, Micro Cinema. Wow, that's great. Okay, so you you you're one of the openers of the festival. That's wonderful. Yes, that's wonderful. Oh, that's great. That's great. Much luck to you. Congratulations. You're an inspiration. Oh my gosh, I can't get a gun. I'm going to create one. That's absolutely marvelous. We well can done. do everything. No, yeah, no. we can everything yeah we can yeah we can and you're proving it good for you wow oh god that 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 knocks me on my face <laughs> on that one um kentaro tell me all about your film oh uh, so i'm the producer so um the director uh natsuki nakagawa um, will talk at first in japanese and i will translate it in english is it oh okay fine? hello okay. hello hello nice to meet you very I'm nice to meet you. Hi, I'm the director of the doc. So I may explain my film in Japanese. So, that's wonderful. And you'll translate. I think that's great. Go right ahead. So eto nakaga des eto naiyo ni tsuite sezmeshite nai desu ga eto shujinko wa kaede toyu hito de eto shikoto mo dekizu karushi ni mo itai koto ga yezu chisa na nichijou e no stress o tamete soto ni haki dasezu ni iru josei ga totsuzen wan to onna no hito ni koe rare te sore kara kanojo no koto ga waasure naku natte shimau hanashi des e jibun no risou de kawaii hito bouryuk o uke te sae mo douji nai hito ni deyatte shimau koto de kanojo no nichijou ga o kaishiku natte iku hanashi des で今回のテーマが不条理で奇,奇妙な話をってことだったので、あの人からワンと吠えられたら気持ち悪いなと思っていて、吠える人を登場させたいと思いました。えー、最初は男性だったんですけれど、女性にすることで彼女たちに奇妙な関係が生まれると思い、そこに焦点を当てたいと思いました。お願いします。So um this film is about a woman called Kaede,、um, who is not like doing well at work. And has been、um, stirring up a lot of stress、uh, from everyday life,、um, but can't let it out. And one day, and she suddenly、um, gets yelled at by a woman,、um, like a dog barking. And after that, and、uh, she can't forget about her. So、um, at first,、um, she is、um, the director uh, is um, trying to set set up. Main character by、uh, with a man, but like、um, the、uh, producer, my offer is to make a you know strange、uh, weird film. So that why um she changed the main character into woman, and the、um, storylines is、um, developing up into the um films um stories about、uh, the women yelling um a barking、uh, from. A、uh, strange woman. Yeah, we we get an abuse feeling here, sort of like how yelling changes us, how 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 the way we're spoken to seems to、uh, seems to alter our physiology in so many ways. Where did this idea come from? えっとまあその吠えられるみたいなそういった発想の、mm. まあ着眼点みたいなその発想のきっかけは何ですか？なんか本当にいきなり浮かんで。来てうーん何でしょうね気持ち悪い状況っていうのを考えた時になんか人から人じゃない発声が来るのがなんか怖いな突然浮かんできて本当に偶然浮かんできた形です。そう、あの、ハイコアアイディア、え、ザ、あの、ザ、ザ、ザ、ザ、ザ、ザ、ザ、ザ、ザ、Yelled from the、um, people like non human beings, non humans like d o g is the most、um, weird situation for her. So it's that the main、um, point. And she just suddenly comes up with i d e a one day about that. 
I like that a lot. I don't I, yelling always bothers me. I don't like uh, <laughs> I don't I don't like it. It's like there's no reason for it sometimes. And and yeah. So to turn it fantastical this way, I think it takes something so simple. You know, we hear these these lofty plots, if you will. But but now we hear this this simple getting yelled at and then look at what happens. I think that's great. Yeah. I think that's really great. When does the when does the film run? Do you know? So it's um now scheduling um uh, it's not you know finished sh- schedule at yet and it's will be um shown offline as well. So please check at the title dog and the website. Yes, definitely. Everyone go to bostonsci-fi.com for the virtual season for the live season at the Somerville in Boston. And 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 if you don't someone might yell at you. Um, Michael, tell us about your film. Hey, how's it going? Sorry, I'm stuck in my car right now. Uh, um, so my film is titled Vemina. It is a psychological horror film that follows a young girl who comes from an abusive household and she is caught in a loop of running away from her problems. And in this escape, when she escapes town with her boyfriend, she gets abducted by the son of an Aztec cult, who is also trying to make his stamp in his family by doing his first human sacrifice. So the film kind of dives into family dynamics and just... uh, tragedy and ways that people deal with their family dynamics whether it be positive or negative and i wanted to bring together two stories of one person who's stuck in this negative loop trying to do the sacrifices with someone else who's trying to get out of her family uh negative trying to earn the the respect of the family one no longer having having to deal with it or not wanting to deal with it exactly yes wow. It's it's funny we have this message here. Uh, yours is a little stronger than yelling at, but we get the notion again of of stepping out of this zone, this stepping out this 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 wave of abuse. Mm. Has to, uh, where did where did the idea come from? So, it's part of a bigger idea. It's the feature concept is based off of a true story, um, based in Mexico. Is there was a family doing human sacrifices of tourists in uh, like Tijuana area to this um, to this religious figure Santa Merte, which is basically the female Grim Reaper. And of course, I wanted to go down to Mexico and film this bigger story about it and dive into the psychology psychology behind that. But money, safety, all that stuff, I couldn't really do it. So I I just <laughs> for the short simpler and uh shifted it to an aztec cult because the people who worship santa merte the people who were sacrificing a lot of the rituals came from the aztec culture so i wanted to create something that felt grounded real and close to what they actually did back then that's that's really quite brilliant that you would tap into something like that uh when when does when does your film open i actually don't i haven't received a screening date or online so probably virtual at this point i would say so if you haven't if you if you don't have your date yet you're probably virtual and that's great so more people can see it folks you don't have to be in boston to enjoy the boston sci-fi film festival it is online go to boston sci-fi.com and learn what you can see in boston and what you can see across the universe there on your little screen uh michael thank you so much that's really imaginative of it you take this 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 thought of just you know escaping the family dynamic and you put it into this this culture well done very well done and i laugh because you have such a calm voice so to hear you go oh yeah this aztec cult needs a human sacrifice it's very funny yeah it's all it's all up here i keep all the commotion up here Oh, you're a scary guy. Much <laughs> luck to you with this film. I look forward to hearing more about it. Danny, Danny, tell me about your film. The Press One, um, it's really a story about um, what do you do with everything somebody left behind when they're no longer there and dealing with all those 
hopes and dreams and different life paths that could have happened after um it's a tough way to describe my film because it kind of gives away the twist but i could i don't know dig into it more but um it's kind of takes place in a seemingly not so distant future where you're able to re i guess summon someone's consciousness to communicate with them again through ai um and the crazy thing with it too is it like was ne it's it's not even really about ai and it kind of like fell into being a sci-fi film interestingly but i love this version of it um but yeah i became really fascinated with voicemails and like that kind of like track record of a relationship and things that would have happened and, and everything like that um i guess yeah i see <laughs> another family dy dynamic sort of thing happening here yeah um, now, now you're trying to pluck and figure out how to tell us about this movie. How did it come to you? How did, how did you figure it out? How did you, uh, what's the inspiration? Um, I mean, the, the original inspiration, because I've been working on, the, I've written so many different versions of this story and it kept being the one that I like would try and stop writing and then coming back to. Um, and yeah, I don't know. It, it always had that voicemail basis but that makes it not very plot driven. A lot of, I mean, I, I, I'm very fascinated by like consciousness and memory and um, I'm doing a horrible job pitching this. Um, <laughs> but anyway, I think it's more about like isolation and needing to be close with people. And also how do you find a way to move on? Um, and it's more about the relationship dynamic, I guess. <laughs> We're, we're all coming out of a pandemic. So no matter what our lives are, we're, yeah. we're only in like the first or second year of, of a rebirth. None of us can mm -hmm. say, oh, no, I didn't. Yes, everybody is in a rebirth. So you're, you're sort of saying that, that how, how, does, how does one get reborn? How does one, how does one move on from, from the past, it seems like? Yeah. Uh, interesting, very interesting. So that's, that's tapping into so many different things. And talking about voicemails, uh, there was a Doctor Who episode that that uh, that said that, that basically communication systems of someone's voice carry on past their lives, and so you're you're kind of making a parable, a cautionary tale, if you will, about about where we put our voices, about where about what we consider uh, uh, our own communication. Uh, yeah, and I feel like a I feel like a voicemail is this kind of very personal timestamp of a dynamic between two people at a certain moment in time um and had the thought like if a company wanted to provide the service of someone being able to communicate with someone they were in love with before they would train the ai train the ai on the voicemails to get that exact um i don't know dynamic they only specifically had and, but, and we, um, we saw something similar like that in black mirror so you're you're really on the right so track. so so the, the funny thing with it was i uh i was telling my friend about it and i'd finished like the first like version of the script i was sharing with people and they're like have you seen that black mirror episode and i was like i watched it but it's 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 interesting because my take on it is very different oh i'm sure um because i think that one's more about like the tech and the ai and whatnot and that yes. kind of like weirdness of it and then mine um you don't even know about that until i guess the last act but <laughs> you tap into something very poignant because how many of us do not want to erase that last voicemail we got from someone who has passed on. Mm -hmm. Keep it on our phones so we hear their voice one last time. So, so you're tapping into something very poignant with this film. When when does it happen? When does it go up? Um, well, the premieres at the festival, and yep. it's going to be on Friday at five p.m. I think. Friday at five. Okay. Uh, yeah. Good time slot, so everyone can then go to dinner at one of the fine restaurants there in Boston and and talk about. The ramifications of this film and and uh, and and our thoughts on moving on and the lives that we lead and those around us, uh, and then they could call people and leave a voicemail and tell them how good it is. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Best of luck to you. Sounds really fascinating. Uh, looking forward to it. Takuya. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Uh, tell us about your film. Hi. Uh, I'm sorry for being late. Um... Well, so my film is about a lake and the story goes like, um, so the lake, the water of the lake is kind of like strange in, and not normal because it, it has some kind of a spiritual entity inside it. And so once uh, some 
people get inside the lake, uh, they are kind of like invaded by the water and becomes act strangely. And so, yeah, the story goes like that. And it's kind of like a, a horror movie uh, based on a lake. Uh, where did you get the idea from this? Where did you get the um, idea? Okay, so basically uh, the idea comes from the concept called animism. Uh, it's a common, I think it's a familiar concept in uh, Asian countries, I think, where we think that um, there, um, how to say, uh, we have, like in everything, we have some kind of spiritual entity inside it, like not only the human beings or like plants or animals, but even the mountains, skies or lakes, or like even in the drops of rice, we believe that there is some kind of you know spiritual entity inside it. So my film is kind of like an ex experiment throughout the concept when uh, uh, to depict what, what, what happens if, you know, the water had some will inside it or like water was like uh, living something. I, I, I knew there's a spiritual element to it because water signifies creativity. Okay. So I thought yeah, yeah. A sort of spiritual element mm -hmm. to it. You're also making quite the statement. Uh, nowadays, we look at the cruelty that we do to animals and as well mm -hmm. as each other. And, and so yeah. if we only took a moment and said everything around us has a soul, maybe yeah, yeah, yeah. A, better, a better world. When does mm -hmm. the film go up? Uh, what do you mean by go up? Sorry. When, uh, when does it premiere at the festival? Okay. What show date? Okay. Um, so actually, I'm in France now and it's premiered in uh, Euro Europe now, right now. But when and, is it at the Boston Film Festival? When when is it show there? Oh, uh, sorry, I, I I'm not sure what, when's the date or like I'm not sure about the date, but yeah, it, it's it's gonna be a American premiere in Boston. Perfect, uh, ladies yeah. and gentlemen. Uh, find find out what happens if everything around you had a soul. Go on to bostonsci-fi.com <laughs> and find the the show dates. <laughs> for this film. Thank you so much. A really interesting concept. It's something I've always felt myself and, and hopefully people pay a close attention to your movie and maybe we'll be a better world because of it. Well done. Yeah. Very well done. Thank you. Thank you so uh, much. I have someone called Zoom user on my screen. Uh, young lady, give us your name. Tell us about your movie. Hi, <laughs> sorry. Uh, I'm Samantha, and uh, my short is uh, called Buffering, Please Wait. And it's about uh, a woman who uh, lost basically everything and uh, was told what happened to her because she lost her memory and everything. So she basically woke up with nothing and no name and everything. And so she was really trying to find out her past. And it turns out that she already knew her past, but it was told to her by the people who uh, found her. And um, it was uh, like the fact that she has nobody and then she's all alone now was something that she did was not willing to accept. So she was stuck in a loop where she kept on deleting her own memories. And it was set in a world where she has this device basically to help her rebuild everything. But she ended up just, she, she ended up using it to let herself be stuck in that loop. You, you, give, us a, you give us a subtle parable about the notion of the avatars how we create these lives on social media. And sometimes they're so vastly different from who we are. We don't want to tell people who we actually are. So you're, 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 you're giving us the, the blunt notion of she doesn't want to know who she is. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's more of an inward thing. I think it's more of a, like, I don't want to accept who I am or what happened to me. Right. Why, why did, wh what, what was the inspiration behind this? It, it was actually a really long creative process, but um, initially I actually, it started out as a thought experiment about like, what if there was a hole in time where like, um, there, like I was thinking of time like a set of dominoes and then if one was missing, but like we kept on going, then what would happen? And then, and then I realized it was very hard to depict time in a story. So we decided to go for memory. So what happened if there's a hole in your memory? And then it became a chase of like, we have to fill the hole in the memory. And then and then it got on and you know, like what happens once you find the memory if you don't want it? And then, and what does it like make of us, you know, like having this missing piece? 
there's there's the old expression, uh, uh, be careful what you wish for because you might just get it. And and it's yes. the same thing here. You know, uh, Wow, that's really interesting. Very deep. Very deep. Yeah. What, when did this turned, open? Uh, this is Saturday uh, at 7 p.m. or 6 p.m. I forgot, but it's Saturday. Saturday night. Wonderful. So, yes. so uh, for those of you who, with holes in your memory, please remember to see this film <laughs> on Saturday night during the festival. Uh, really wonderful. Really, really wonderful. Uh, all of you, thank you so much for being here and, and sharing this. Ladies and gentlemen, go to bostonsci-fi.com to find schedules for all of these projects and so much more. There's a whole lineup at the Somerville Theater in Boston, and there's just as big a lineup virtually. So if you can't get out there to Boston, you can still be part of Boston Sci-Fi Film Festival. Thank you all very much. It is an absolute pleasure. Best of luck to you. And I look forward to hearing more about your films. Thank, Thank you, Jay. You. Ciao. Thank you. Thank you.